When I was researching opening a practice, I came across an article um, from my alma mater, University of Maryland, where they ran a program where they were able to fit Holocaust survivors with hearing aids um, at no cost. And I thought that was incredible. And I decided if I uh, started a practice that I was gonna do that and I wanted to use the practice to do good and, and make a difference here. There wasn't a program here. Um, and I found through a friend, Amy, at JFNCS, they were able to help find us a population of survivors um, who needed assistance, who were, had hearing loss and, and unable to get or to afford hearing aids. I became program manager about five years ago after I was already doing some case management with Holocaust survivors and I just loved working with Holocaust survivors. At any one time we probably are working with about 152 different Holocaust survivors. So all of a sudden I get a phone call from Dr. Wyckoff. She pretty much showed up on my doorstep and said, I'd like to recreate that program that they did in Maryland. So the two of us partnered. We actually formulated a written agreement about who was going to do what, and we started. So we've been working for about 16 months, and the day is finally here where we can change some lives and, and help people hear, give them the gift of hearing. All right, are you ready for me? All right. Welcome. I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you. Come on back with me. Just make sure everything's nice and clear. Beautiful, and I'm going to check this side. Beautiful there. JFC recommended me here someplace to help me out with the hearing aid. I told them that I had the problem, and they tried to help me out, and that's how I wound up here. And people have different voices. So some of the voices came in clear, some didn't. I tried to make out the best I could. Um, so I want to take a minute to go over your audiogram because it's been a few weeks since I saw you last. I call this an audiogram or graph of hearing. The way you read this is volume or loudness. So we look at it soft like a whisper down to loud like a jet engine blast. This is frequency or pitch. Some people that came to see us have natural age-related hearing loss. Some people that have come in um, have a problem that they may have been born with or had an infection or a stroke or, or a blood illness. Um, and it's just been a huge range. This is how I program the hearing aids. I customize them for his ears. We all just have to stay really quiet for one minute while I calibrate these for your ear canal space. Everybody's body is unique, so you're going to hear some noise in your ears, and this allows the hearing aid to calibrate or adjust itself to your ears. Some people, I was very surprised to see their audiogram. They were really profoundly impaired, and they're walking around this world missing out on so much. It's going to make sure that these hearing aids work for the people, and you know she's willing to see new people if we have anybody else that comes forward that needs um, hearing services, so we're really excited about it. I mean, this is this is huge for these individuals and for our program to be able to offer these hearing aids to people who need them. Melissa asked me about my hearing, and uh, uh, you know, I said I, that I do have some problems uh, distinguishing words and understanding words, and so she said, "Well, let me do a hearing test." Tell me, you know, the problems that I was having, and. Uh, she said that about the program that uh, she had uh, gotten together with Starkey. She said that, you know, she, uh, being, a, being a survivor, uh, she said that she could get me some hearing aids. Well, it's clearer. <laughs> Not only loud it, but it's, I could hear what they say. Before I could hear it, but I could hear like, words I couldn't make out the whole sentence. Some of it was missing in the sentence. Now I could hear the whole sentence. I could really tell a difference. Uh, I could, uh, you know, I guess I could hear what I was missing for a bunch of years and uh, uh, very thankful that uh, she was able to do this for us. We're really, really appreciative to Dr. Wyckoff for um, treating everybody for free, working with the hearing aid manufacturer, offering these services basically for the rest of the survivor's lifetime and to the Starkey Foundation who, you know, has donated 18 pairs, pairs of high-end hearing aids which were custom built for each of the people. So 
it's been a great program. We couldn't do it without those two partners. My hopes is that we make their lives a little bit better, that we connect them back with their families and with their friends, and that um, we make them a little bit happier. I want them to love hearing and to feel connected and to feel like they're part of the conversation again. Um, so that's my hope. My other hope is that um, someone sees what we're doing and decides that they want to make a difference in their community. There are other things, you know, they may need vision help, they may need dental help, and you know, look how easy it was for us to make a difference. So um, I just also think that we should show people that, you know, one small person, one small little company can, can make a big difference.